Welcome to the first socially distanced show and tell on Tested. Hi, Norm. Hey, Adam. How's it going? Oh my gosh, it feels so good to be in the cave. <laughs> I know. This is literally the first time we've shot anything here since the middle of March. And operating the camera, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Joey Famelli. There he is. So I know you've been doing so many builds at home and uh, everyone online's been doing things from baking to all sorts of skill building. Yeah. I found that the past couple months, I've been spending my nights and weekends on some model making and making use of tools I have at home, including the Glowforge laser cutter, yep. and also the, the Cricut maker. Oh. And this is my latest project that I wanted to bring in and so, share with you. Is this a book nook? It's it meant is meant to go a on book a shelf? Nook. Yes, okay. so Jen Schachter made her wonderful book nook and a kit, uh, and I was inspired by that, and the growing book nook community on places like Reddit to make my own. And so this is my uh, oh, Death okay. Star. All right, I'm gonna block the camera with my head so I can really get this experience. Dude, oh man, it's all size for the three and a half inch action figures. Oh, look at the stormtrooper back there. Dude, I would have killed for this when I was a kid. This is beautiful, Norm. It's like making my own playset. And there are so many things here that just happen to perfectly fit together and is available. One, I really fell in love with this um, acrylic that Glowforge sells. It's a matte black on one side and glossy on the other side. Oh, fascinating. And so the mirror finish on the floor is just the same material as what is on the walls. I see you've done some etching and you've done some, did you cut out the bubbles and then insert them into black yeah, plaques? Yeah, so ins insert, uh, they also have frosted acrylic. So a lot of that was just inlay, figuring out the curve, press fit, uh, something you showed me a while ago when we talked about acrylic cement, that's yep. what, that holds this whole thing together. Doesn't it? Yeah, just <laughs> capillary action. It makes these kind of uh, slot joints. Yep. It just makes them the one peach. Yeah. And, uh, and then the relief here is all uh, 0.02 styrene. Nice. It's a little stinky, isn't it? It is. And the styrene on um, the Cricut Maker. So vinyl cutter, oh. you know, three passes with a blade, pops right out. Oh. Use a little bit of a uh, Tamiya like thin cement. Yep. Sticks right to acrylic. The, uh, the 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 weld on three will glue the styrene to acrylic all day long. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. I love the angled mirror in the Vader hallway. I that's just like, meh. but I'm curious about your uh, uh, about your trash compactor hallway here. Did you consider a two-way mirror here and a one-way mirror in the back, you could get an infinity hallway, Norm. Yeah, and, and this is one of those projects, you know, it's over the span of three weeks, you can tell where most of the time was spent. And as I reach my own personal deadline, yeah. places I'm like, okay, gotta get this done. Uh, so top part, most of the work there, all the accents. Yeah. But yeah, on the bottom here, the decision was like, do I wanna have it looking into the detention center console room? Right. You know, as if it's Han, Leia, Chewie, Luke looking over there in that blaster fight, but if you look at the reverse shot, it actually goes into nothingness. It's just like white in the background. Oh, oh interesting. Yeah, so I don't know which, and, and so I think this is like my cross section of what it would look like from that perspective. Yeah, yeah. I like the reverse also. Vader is coming in this way, and then you have the heroes him looking the other way. Yeah. A little bit of that. It's really, really neat. I can see you doing things like adding some more diffusion on the floor to get a little bit better, more lighting. Wash. Layering grates was like added just in, yeah. like in the dark. You just get some really nice light dispersion. You um, also might consider some more lights uh, up here that are facing that way just mm. to kind of pick out details, sort of the way a film uh, director of photography would do, you know? But dude. And this, it was a fun exercise and all in Adobe Illustrator, just like I'm a different type of maker where I don't, I, prototyping is like stressful for me. So <laughs> yeah. I like to, you know, hours on a computer, yeah. that build up and then press and go in a laser cutter. And when that all comes together, that's very satisfying. Super satisfying. It used to be a thing I tried to do at ILM, which is like, I want that first pass to be right. Yeah. All the parts. And there's never, there's always yeah. something that's wrong. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, but it's like all that build up. And then I like the slip case aesthetic, you know, oh. wooden acrylic cuts on the same cutter. Um, Constraints, right? Like the Glowforge cuts material that's 12 by 20. I designed this to fit in a, like an Ikea detail shelf, uh -huh. you know, 13 inches tall. But when I have the height of this basically 12 inches, 13 inches, like I can't cut this in one sheet. So a lot of right. you know, piecing things together. It yeah. looks fantastic. Don't you love also um, the whole, basically the building blocks of the Star Wars aesthetic 
are things like hills lined up like bricks and 45, uh, 45 degree, degree angled oh, yeah. lines yeah. and things like that. It yeah. just looks terrific. I really, can I turn this? Yes, yep. Um, is this just, I like this this interesting changing relief on the sides. Yeah, and this was getting around, again, I didn't have a sheet of wood that could cut, laser cut. Right, And right. so it needed to be two pieces, and I'm like, hey, if I'm gonna join them, then why not do some inlay also? I have the same vector files I've designed, yeah. you know, the Imperial logo, so walnut, cherry, and then it's a nice contrast with the plastic inside. Oh man, okay, so I'm sure you're already thinking about the next one. That's, do you have any hints about what it might be? Um, I like the, uh, you know, there are a lot of interiors of the Star Wars universe, but there's also stuff in Star Trek that I'm thinking about. And, you know, Galoob made the same yeah. three and a half inch figures. I like the scale, 1 18th. I was doing things at a one, like 1 12th scale before, six inch, yeah. but that's a lot of material. Like yeah. this is, you know, hundreds of dollars of acrylic, but uh, the smaller I get, the more mileage I can get out of the material. Indeed. Yeah. So, Norm, I, it's gorgeous. Well done, sir. I'm That's glad you liked amazing. it. Amazing. Yeah, I, I love the the shiny floor. Also, makes it look like it's much bigger space than yeah. it is yeah. in there with all the reflections and the mirror. I mean, it's a tried and true book nook technique, but it's the advice I would give: use a mirror, an angled mirror. Yeah, in the back. Yeah. It's lovely. Yeah. Um, there'll be some design files I'm gonna put up online for people who want to make their own. Uh, awesome. And I'll have another video, kind of start walking step by step about the making of all this. A little bit of show and tell. This is how I've been spending my lockdown. Dude, thank you, man. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, everybody. See you next time. Okay, well, that was a lot of fun. And thanks to Adam for letting me share with him uh, my project that I've been working on nights and weekends for the past couple weeks. Hope you guys enjoyed it as well. And now that I've brought this back home, I thought it might be interesting for you out there who may be interested in designing and making your own book nooks to see how this was built. And I can actually take this apart. Uh, so uh, if you're unfamiliar with book nooks, I realize we didn't really explain it. They're basically a, a type of diorama that's designed to fit alongside uh, books on a bookshelf. In my case, uh, Detolf Expedit IKEA furniture was the parameters of mine. And so really the constraints are something you want to kind of hide uh, amongst the spine of books. So uh, more often than not, they're kind of narrow, taller than they are wide. Uh, and in this case, this is about six inches wide and about 13 uh, inches tall. Uh, now, the bulk of the work that I had done already in terms of the hallway design, I had done with the previous diorama that I had made for uh, 12th scale Bandai figures. And so that was really the inspiration for me to take that design since the work was already done in Illustrator and see if I could port it over uh, using that for a book nook. And I quickly realized I couldn't just make that one hallway into the entire diorama because it wasn't going to be tall enough or narrow enough or maybe too narrow that I couldn't get figures in. Uh, and so picking a scale was very important. And luckily, you know, very popular in Star Wars collectibles uh, for the longest time from Kenner to now Hasbro, uh, there are the 1 18th size figures. These are about 3.75 inches tall. So many of them out. You have the Star Wars Black Series, very poseable ones. I'm a big fan of those. And I thought that one might be a great place to to go for the scale of this, uh, which then doing some quick math, let me know that, okay, if they're about three to four inches tall, then maybe I could do two levels of something. And then I decided, okay, two levels, a cross section of something in the Star Wars universe, a Death Star hallway. And originally my plan was actually just to do two of the top hallways stacked top to bottom. Um, and then of course I decided to, once I got this done, to go with the full detention center uh, hallway as well. Um, so let me take this whole thing apart and this is all finished basically this week, so nothing's glued together yet. Uh, but the exterior here, if you wanna go in reverse, is 
just uh, some plywood. It's actually a little bit thicker than the acrylic. This is about uh, 0.2 inches thick. Um, so about half a centimeter or so in metric, uh, which actually gives it nice contrast, not only in the, uh, the softness of the material, this being wood versus acrylic plastic on the inside, but also different thicknesses uh, in the material as well. Um, so I haven't glued anything together because a lot of this requires uh, some kind of tuning and maintenance. Um, and the way I thought about designing this was really two hallways or two sections stacked. And so I first went about designing the top hallway, uh, knowing that I had a lot of that wall panel design already and I could scale that down for 1 18th scale. Uh, and then also use a lot of the same techniques for that first diorama except double it up because I wanted lighting on both walls. And the six inches wide here is really because this hallway is actually four inches wide but I needed that extra inch on either side uh, for lighting. Um, and so if we take a look I get these ceiling panels popped off. It really is a four inch hallway uh, wide by about, this is about 12 inches deep right here before my mirrored section. Uh, and it's really, you think of it as building a box, right? There's a floor panel, a baseboard, that then I have four walls attached to it. And that was really my philosophy of, of designing this. I'm not a, a CAD designer. I didn't design this in 3D. I, I think about this in terms of flat forms and how they kind of fold together. Um, and so baseboard first, then figured out, okay, if I'm gonna have uh, 1 8 inch thick acrylic, then all my slots here are gonna be 1 8 inch 0.125 by some dimension. Uh, and I decided not to mirror these, so you know, went a little bit bolder, added a door here, but reflected a lot of the similar elements from the, the kind of um, these pill-shaped windows here, also inlaid frosted acrylic uh, to these wall panels, which while it looks great on the uh, matte black acrylic, uh, really that extra accent of 0.02 black styrene, which for me was the real MVP of this whole project, being able to cut that on the vinyl cutter um, added just that extra bit of dimensionality to it. So now with the top panel off, you can actually see how these pieces come together. And it is just tried and true uh, slot joints. So uh, I think of it as uh, two, uh, two frames on the outside uh, that then the walls then slot into that create these nice little seams here. Uh, and then using some acrylic cement, drop a little bit down the side, and that really welds the whole thing um, together. And when I first built this hallway, I kept on going back after I first did the first uh, laser cut pass, put it together. I found it really useful to have uh, one of these figures handy because I always wanted to continually reference the scale of this because while on the computer screen, I had all the kind of numerical dimensions of it being four inches wide, about 5.5 inches tall. I knew these figures were 3.75 inches tall as well. Uh, nothing prepares you for how it's actually gonna look until you actually put the figure inside the diorama and say, okay, is there enough room for two of them to go side by side? Uh, does it scale well? Does it look like it fits in this space properly or is it too big or too small? Uh, and so a lot of that test fitting was also to make sure I had the scale done properly. Um, so once I had the top hallway done, then it was a lot of thinking about how to do this bottom hallway, which is that long detention uh, corridor on the block where Leia is held captive, Han, Luke, and Chewie then go to rescue her. Um, and it has this iconic hexagonal look, which meant I couldn't do that same type of straight up and down wall that I had on the top hallway. And it took a little bit of thinking, uh, but again, I thought at first of having, what does a baseboard look like? The floor's gotta be flat. And I knew I had to have these grills here. So basically, if I can even pop that out. Yep, it was this graded floor that was designed and laser cut. Uh, kind of this nice pattern here. I knew that was gonna diffuse the light. Um, 
And I ended up um, coming up with a way to basically have uh, a sequence of these brackets uh, that would become the kind of pillar struts uh, on the inside of the hallway. And then, uh, as opposed to slotting a wall vertically, uh, I had two pieces uh, that would come down at an angle. Uh, and so, under each of these, and I can even pop out some pieces here, you can actually see that these bracketed frames have multiple angular slots here that then uh, I had other pieces of acrylic come in at the side that then meet at the center and create this kind of angled wall all the way down uh, the path of this hallway. And it worked out really well because I could have two different thicknesses or um, uh, depths of those walls. So I could actually create some recess, you know, doorway entrances to those prison cells. That's what those would be. Uh, and then as I told Adam, it was about choosing whether I was gonna look down into that infinite abyss, that white space that you see in the movies, because there is no end in that hallway in that backdrop, uh, or look into the detention center console room where the elevators come up and they have that uh, firefight. And decided to go that way um, so that it would at least create um, some type of action. Another kind of design constraint that I set for myself was to make sure this could all be lit with one LED light strip. Um, and basically one, one strip that would go from the top to the bottom, then out um, a port in the back to plug into power. And uh, that really then dovetailed with my decision to go with the hallway, uh, which is a cool white light at the top, and then also the detention hall at the bottom, uh, which is a warmer light because uh, that gives a nice contrast, but also meant that I need to choose one color temperature for light strip and then use a color gel, uh, in this case on the bottom, to tint that and make that a warmer light. So this is just really one LED strip that goes along the outside wall here um, on both sides. It goes underneath and I actually have some under lighting light up the characters and then goes along through a channel and underneath and it goes, I have just enough length uh, on a 15 foot LED strip to go a couple times on the bottom, go through that graded diffusion and then come out the back, light that little uh, elevator room uh, and then plug into power. Um, and this allowed me then to assemble the top get that perfectly fitted, assemble this bottom hallway, get that fitted as well. You'll notice this is actually elevated a little bit because if you remember from the detention hallway, it's a, there's a stairwell that goes up into this. And so uh, the way I have it imagined is that there would be a descending, you know, there'd be a um, kind of a height difference. Uh, the stormtroopers in the control room would be recessed just a little bit. Um, and that would create a better effect there. Uh, stack those two pieces together, and actually, uh, they're just actually not glued together. They're only held together by that light strip, and I did give a little bit of a wiggle room so I could get everything fitted, and then design this exterior box, uh, this wooden slip case, um, and also the uh, did some offsets to have some etches, uh, just give it a little bit of an accent, uh, put some text on the spine, and then put it all together, and it ended up, I think, looking pretty good. Uh, the mirror was something that I definitely wanted to do as well, um, just to give it that infinite look. It's all these parts I found online, super cheap, from the LED strips to the mirror. Uh, acrylic you can get pretty readily available. I really like this uh, matte black on one side, glossy black on the other side, acrylic, as well as the frosted acrylic. Those will remain construction materials. Now, uh, I will have some files. Um, stay tuned for a video coming very soon where I'll walk you through the making of a small diorama yourself. Uh, and those files I'll share because the files for all of this are kind of messy right now. It's one of those projects, as I was telling Adam, that I was very meticulous at the beginning in trying to get everything to perfectly press fit um, and come together almost as if it was a kit. Uh, and that's certainly the case with the top part, but once I got to my deadlines and was rushing to completion, things are being held together, you know, 
by masking tape and, and just kind of press fit together and cobbled together at the end because uh, I just wanted to get this done. But I'm really pleased with the result. I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. And it's uh, another notch in my belt for a laser cutter project as I'm continuing to uh, develop my skills in vector design and miniatures making during this lockdown. Uh, thank you again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching that entire video. Your viewing helps us keep the lights on. Well, it's one of the ways. One of the other ways is through selling our merch. And you guys have been so fabulous about suggesting great merch ideas when I say something strange or funny and you suggest in the comments that we put it on a sticker or we put it on a t-shirt. Well, we are following your advice. And if you follow the links below, you can buy some of our merch so that we can make some more videos. Thank you guys for watching.